Hi, thanks for joining us today. If this ministry has impacted your life, we want to hear about it. You can send us your story at amen at vnchurch.com. Also, we would love if you would partner with us financially. You can go to vnchurch.com and click the Give Online or text your donation amount to 757-230-2110. So good to see all of you today. Welcome to week number five of our series we are calling Running with the Giants. And today we will be looking at a character named Rebecca, and we will be summarizing her life into one statement. That's right, one statement. But before we dive into that, I want to take a moment, look into the camera, and say welcome to all of you who are joining us online. Wherever you are, we're glad you're with us today. Vineyard, would you help me welcome those who are joining us online? We're glad you're here. God bless you. Well, the whole goal of this series has been an encouragement series is really what it is. Our goal and our hope is that from each message, you would kind of leave with a life lesson that you take away from these giants. And today, as I said, we're going to be looking at Rebecca. She has a small story in the book of Genesis. And even though it's a small story, it has an incredible truth. And really what we're going to look at, it's a big, big topic in the Bible. It's all throughout the Bible in the Old Testament and the New Testament. And honestly, I don't think just Rebecca would say this one statement to us. I think all of the giants of the faith, as well as people you know that have gone on to be with the Lord, I think they would say this. They would say, man, now that I have eternity in my view and I see what earth was really all about and I see what heaven is really all about, I think I have no doubt in my mind that they would say this statement, and that is give generously to others. That's your first blank is give generously to others. That's what Rebecca would, would say to us. It is in other words, invest your life with an eternal perspective. Give generously. Give generously to people. And it's not just your money, but your time, your attention, your encouraging words, your hugs. I mean, every day, look for an opportunity to give to somebody, to bless somebody. I think Rebecca would say to us, she had no idea how one small act of generosity changed her life. She would say, I, I couldn't believe it that this one small thing really not just changed her life, but we can still look back today and see the change it had. It affected the course of history. Just one small act of generosity. So I want to give you some context before we jump into the story, where we are in the timeline. If you remember a couple weekends ago, Pastor Jacob spoke on Abraham. Well, Rebecca is Abraham's daughter-in-law. And Abraham was given this promise from God that he would be the father of many nations. He would be the father of multitudes, as numerous as the sands of sea. And he had a child, one child at 100 years old. So that was a miracle in itself. But now we're kind of coming into the story where his son, that one child, Isaac's getting a little bit older, and he still doesn't have a wife. And even though Abraham's a man of faith, I'm pretty sure he's getting nervous. You know, to, to be the father of many nations, my son needs to get married. And Isaac has yet to uh, find a wife. And another dynamic is that Abraham is kind of caught in a, in a, in a paradox. He's, uh, he doesn't want to send Isaac out to find a wife. One, because that's not the cultural context. The parents would pick the spouses for their children. But then on top of it, he has one child, and he's 100 years old. <laughs> and the whole promise God has given him rests on this one child. So he's, he's caught kind of in a dilemma. Well, he comes, Abraham comes up with his plan. He decides, okay. Well, I'm going to send out my chief servant, my top guy who I trust completely. I'm going to send him out to find a wife for my son, Isaac. So he gives him 10 camels. He loads the camels up with all these goods and jewelry. And he says, hey, go find, go find a wife. Get it right the first time. I cannot imagine the pressure on this guy. He's not only having to find a wife and bring back somebody that would please Isaac, that Isaac has to spend the rest of his life with, but he also has to please Abraham, the father. Hmm, what do you think? I mean, uh, there's a lot of pressure. 
So we're jumping in right there. He's already set out. The, the top guy is set out looking for this wife, and he's doing what any of us would do in that situation. He's praying. So that's where we're going to jump in. It's at Genesis chapter 24, verse 12. It says, then he prayed. This is talking about that top guy, the chief servant. Then he prayed, O Lord, God of my master Abraham, give me success today and show kindness to my master Abraham. See, I am standing beside this spring, and the daughters of the townspeople are coming out to draw water. May it be that when I say to a girl, please let down your jar, and uh, that I may have a drink, and she says, drink, and I'll water your camels too. Let her be the one you have chosen for your servant Isaac. By this, I will know that you have shown kindness to my master. Let me just pause there for a second. You can read that quickly, and it, oh, that's not a big deal, but that is really a big ask. I mean, he had 10 camels. That's, that's a big venture. So that's a huge request. But it goes on to say in verse 15, it says, before he had finished praying, Rebecca came out with her jar on her shoulder. So he's at this spring. He's said this prayer and kind of the young uh, ladies of the town are coming out. And Rebecca comes out with this. They're carrying these, gallon, or these jars with two to five gallon jars on their shoulders. They're coming out to get water. And uh, he walks up to one and he says, may I have a drink? Just may I have a drink of water? And she says, sure, I'll give you a drink as well as I'll give water to your camels. Once again, that might not seem like a big deal, but that's huge. I really want to illustrate, I want to show you how big of a deal that is. It's really a miracle and a major request. Well, 10 camels, they, she, he had 10 camels. If she watered all 10 camels, a camel can drink about 20 gallons a day of water at the end of each day. So 10 camels at 20 gallons, that's about 200 gallons of water. That's a lot of water. 200 gallons drawn, she probably had a five-gallon jar. 200 gallons drawn at five, with a five-gallon jar, that's 40 trips back and forth. What that means is Rebecca had some serious guns. <laughs> this thing's, she's going back and forth with that. So 40 trips, let's say conservatively, it was probably about, let's say she had to go collect the water, lift it, you know, put it on her shoulder, carry it back, pour it back and forth each time, 40 times. Let's say conservatively, it's about three minutes each. That's a two hour, I'll help you. It went from may I have a drink to sure, I'll help you for two hours. <laughs> she went above and beyond two hours. And really this attitude, you don't see this a lot. This attitude stands in stark contrast to human nature. Just, this is not how humans naturally do. Yeah, sure, I'll do that. I'll go above and beyond in that. And really, it seems in today's, morning, today's day and age, more than ever, especially, and I'm not picking on anybody, but with young people, it seems each new generation kind of has this deeper attitude of what's the least I can do. I mean, but that's, Rebecca's the opposite of this. Rebecca would say, no, 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 you got it all wrong. That's not how it's supposed to be. You know, and if you think this is crazy what Rebecca did, this is what Jesus talked about. Jesus said, if somebody asks for your coat, you give them your cloak too. If somebody asks you to go a mile, you go two miles. You go that extra mile. You go that extra mile. You do more. Without even being asked, you do more. And I think this is what Rebecca would say to us. So why did Rebecca do that? Well, I don't think it's just because she was nice. No, I think it's so much more than that. Well, in Rebecca's story, what happens is she obviously does this. She waters the camels, and uh, the servant's like, you're the one. <laughs> First of all, you're an answer to a prayer request, but you're the one. So he, what, he ends up actually proposing for Isaac. So he goes over to the camels, and he's unloading all the goods. He's bringing out all the jewelry. And he starts unloading this jewelry, and Rebecca's like, oh, that, that's Isaac's jewelry. That, he owns all that? I'm good to go. <laughs> I'm like, you haven't even seen the guy. Like, that's a sub point for guys right on there. Just get jewelry, figure it out for yourself. That's all that needs to be said. But so anyway, she ends up becoming the wife of Isaac. And really, she, if, if you know the story, she ends up becoming a part of the bloodline of our Lord Jesus just because of this simple act of generosity, this simple serve. So I think she would say to us today, give generously. And I really think every giant would say to us, hey, you, first of all, you don't know how short your life really is. You don't know that. Second of all, you don't realize the impact your stuff here on earth can have for generations to come. I think that's what they would say to us. You know, these thoughts have really been on my mind this past week. Last Saturday, I was a part of a memorial service here at Vineyard 
for a, um, a, a woman. She was about to turn 60 this year. Some of you might know her, her name was Amy Gershon, her husband Amy and Pat. Um, they serve here. And Amy went in for about four months ago. She went in for a routine gallbladder checkup. And she's not even 60 yet. She went in for routine gallbladder checkup. And she found out at that appointment that she had very, very serious pancreatic cancer. And they told her she had to start chemotherapy immediately. And that, <clears throat> honestly, she didn't have, uh, you know, probably more than a few weeks to live. Well, she ended up going to be with the Lord on February 13th of this year. And uh, it was at this uh, memorial service last Saturday where we were celebrating her beautiful life and all she did. And it, as I was sitting there, I was sitting right over here, actually. And, you know, I just heard as uh, the kids came up and the different people she, her life had had an impression on, just story after story of how she just impacted so many people. You know, she helped here at Vineyard. She served at the local missions. She just did everything. She used every opportunity to serve people. And she was just generous. She just gave generously people, served people. And the one that really stuck with me is every time she would serve somebody, she would just share about how Christ had changed her life and how that's why she was doing what she was doing for no other reason but just to love people and to serve people. I was like, wow, she really, Amy really embodies the joy and servant attitude of Christ. And that's how I want to live. You know, even when she had gotten those news from the doctor, you know, she still went on giving encouraging words and, and you know, serving people. <laughs> That's how I want to live. I want to live like that. Every moment counts. And, you know, I'm more inspired today than I've ever been in my life to make every moment count, to make every minute of my life count. And I think that's what Rebecca would say to, to us today is that everything in your life counts. So give generously. Don't hold back. Don't hold on to it. Give generously. Well, I want to give us some principles that I think Rebecca would say to us today that would run in line with this giving generously thought. The first principle on your outline is that you can't be generous and legalistic at the same time. You can't be generous and legalistic at the same time. It isn't a give to get scenario. And that's why really the whole prosperity and wealth narrative is dishonoring to Jesus because it's built on a half-truth. Really, we see in Scripture that God does want to bless you so that you can be a blessing to others. That's why he wants to bless you. See, God wants to put inside of each one of us, why don't you write this down, a willingness. Somewhere on your outline, you write it anywhere, there's a blank on your back. Willingness. God wants to put inside of each one of us a willingness, a willing heart, that for no other reason, no other motivation, we just give and we serve out of that willingness, just a willing heart. You know, this is... True when it comes to tithing. God doesn't want people coming into the church and going, man, I've got to put something in that bag at the end of service or else I'm going to be cursed. No, no, that's not at all how it is. God, Jesus doesn't place the curse on you. He lifts the curse off you. That's not how it is. With serving, you know, those people who serve one, attend one. I mean, they just do it out of a willing spirit. They don't have to do it. They get to do it. You know, we've done for 24, almost 25 years here at Vineyard, upholding this value of a life-giving mentality to serving and giving generously. In other words, doing those things, giving generously, doesn't take away from us. It adds to our life. That's what we call the tree of life perspective. It gives, we, we get life from it. It doesn't subtract from us. And I think that, that's why I love Vineyard. I think it creates an atmosphere, a place where people come in, and they're like, wow, you know, I don't feel pressured, but I, how can I give? How can I invest here? What can I do? I want to be a part of this. Not because it's a great church, but because God is doing something here, and I want to be a part of that. You should never, ever walk away from our services feeling guilty or feeling like, oh, I, have to put, I wish I hadn't put so much in that bag. No, my job is to take the pressure off of you, not put it on you. It says this in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, each man should give what he has decided in his, what, let's say this one together, in his heart to give. Not reluctantly or under compulsion. Don't be a miser, don't be a scrooge. But also don't give because some slick guy moved your emotions. No, for God loves a cheerful giver. In other words, just do it out of the willingness of your heart. Just a willingness. You know, there's not too many things that move the heart of God more than a willing heart. The second principle I think Rebecca would give us is that you can't take it with you, but you can send it on ahead. You know, I heard a pastor once say that he never saw a U-Haul behind a hearse. <laughs> Have you ever heard the story about the miser, the old miser, who he found out he was going to die soon, and he had worked his whole life earning all of this money, 
and he decided he wanted to take it to heaven with him. So he told his wife, hey, when I die, I'm, I, want, I work for this. I'm taking it with me to heaven. So would you please bury me with all my money I made? Well, he ends up passing away about two or three weeks later. And uh, at the funeral, they're getting ready to close the casket. And uh, the wife says, wait, 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 wait. And she walks up and she looks at him and she places a box she had and she lays it on top of him. And then they close the casket and she's walking back to her seat. And her friends are just looking amazed. They're, wow, that's so honorable that you honored his request. Did you actually do it? And she looks at them and she says, yeah, of course I did. I wrote him a check. <laughs> You can't take it with you, but you can send it on ahead. You know, there's a book. There's a tiny little book. Hey, and I encourage you to buy this book and, and read it. It's cheap on Amazon. Little thin book. It's called The Treasure Principle. And it, it's, the thesis of that book is this point, that you can't take it with you, but you can send it on ahead. Jesus said this in Matthew chapter 6. He said, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moth and rust do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. What Jesus is doing there is he's given us the greatest insider tra trading tip ever. He's saying, hey, those things you have right now on earth, that's okay that you have that, but just know that when I come back, that stuff means nothing. That's all worthless. So he's saying, make eternal investments with your temporary goods. You know, I think Rebecca understood that principle. She took a, sure, I'll help you. She went above and beyond in that. She made a two-hour serve, and it affected her life forever. It had changed history. Because of that, because she watered, gave some water and watered some camels, she ended up being a part of the bloodline of Jesus. As I said, she ended up becoming the great, 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 grandmother of Jesus. 37. Come on, give it to me. I worked on that all week. <laughs> but the point to take away, the principle is that, hey, you have no idea the sm how the smallest thing can make have the biggest impact and really how everything in your life counts. And you, you can't take it with you, but you can send it on ahead. The third principle I think she would give us is that you can't wait for the feeling. Amen. That one's huge. I'd put a star next to that one. You can't wait for the feeling. It will follow. You can use this one on almost everything in life. See, when you're tempted, that's your feelings lying to you. Your feelings lie to you. That's why we live by principle, not by pressure. I don't feel led right now. Well, you need to get the let out is what you need to do. <laughs> I don't feel like, you know, I'm just waiting for the Lord to say something to me, you know. Do you think Rebecca had that perspective? Do you think she woke up, well, I'm just going to wait for the Lord to say something, to, to give generously and to serve others? No, she didn't wake up going, I'm going to water 10 camels today. No, she, in that, she made a decision to be generous, and then let, she let her feelings follow. She understood that principle of doing it first and letting feelings follow when it comes to being generous. You know, this verse, this next verse on your outlines, Matthew chapter 6, a lot of people get this one backwards. But what it says is it says, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Even pastors will misquote this. They'll say, where your heart is, there your treasure is. No, it's, it's money first, feelings follow. And what that verse is saying is you have to make some investments. You have to make a decision to make some investments make some eternal vets. You have to make a decision to be generous. If you wait for the burden to give first, you're going to live with regrets. You have to make a decision to make those investments. You know, one of the greatest decisions Olivia and I, that's my wife Olivia and I, ever made was that we made a decision. We came to a place together where we uh, made a giving covenant is what we call it. And what that really is, is we decided that we were going to put the Lord first in every area of our lives, including our finances. You know, and this is really how we were raised. It's how we were raised. We were brought up this way. And if you have family or kids, I encourage you to raise your kids this way. You know, when I was a young boy with my two brothers, we had it was a popular 90s toy. It was that uh, piggy bank with the three different departments. You had the little, the little church. You put a little bit in there, little savings, and then the rest is for Dollar Tree. <laughs> that was our little toy. And, we, you know, when we got to that age where we got a weekly allowance every week, our dad helped help us break it up, 10%. 
uh, to, to the Lord, 10% to savings, and 80% uh, you can spend on what you would like. And really teaching us the principle, hey, put God first. Invest in what the Lord is doing. When we get a birthday card from our grandmother, my mom would say, hey, make sure to tithe that first dollar. That first dollar goes to Jesus. Put him first in your life. And this is how we are brought up, just putting the Lord first in everything, including our finances. So before, right before we got married, Olivia and I attended a financial small group here at Vineyard. And we went there because, just like a lot of you, we didn't know what we were doing with our money. We didn't make the best decisions. Uh, but we went in, and the best thing, we, we came away with a lot, but the best thing we walked away with was this giving covenant. And the reason we call it a covenant is because we set the parameters. We define the relationship, meaning our feelings had nothing to do with it. Whether good or bad, our giving cut covenant maintained. It's the same with our marriage covenant. No matter what, feelings have no part in that. That's our marriage covenant. So this was our giving, giving covenant in the finances. And how Olivia and I actually do this is it's 10% uh, we give right off the bat. That's just, hey, that's for the Lord, and it goes to our place of worship. And actually, how, when, how we do it, we do it every month. And you don't have to necessarily do it this way. I encourage you to do it this way. But Olivia and I sit down before the beginning of each month, and we'll look ahead. Kind of, We know we get paid twice a month, and uh, when we're setting our budget for that month, we'll look at it, and that first 10% just goes straight to the Lord. No matter what's going on, that's, hey, that's the Lord's. And for us, you know, sometimes we'll write a check, we'll do it online. It's not a huge drawn out thing, but it's for us, it's not a business transaction. It's an act of worship, saying, hmm, I'm acknowledging, Jesus, you are Lord of my life. And that's really what it is, is, you know, we've surrendered our lives to Jesus. We've given him our entire lives. Why would that not include our finances? So we pray over it. We include God in the decision-making process. After we give that 10%, then we look, God, what else? What else? Where are our priorities here? What do we need to be doing? We invite him in that whole process and, and it really all belongs to God anyways, as I said. That's, that's our perspective, and it really helps us get in that place. That's our covenant with God, that he, he owns us. He owns us, and it's an act of worship. Now, I encourage you to start. Maybe it's a baby step for you. Maybe it's inviting Jesus into that process. Have him pray. But when you look at your finances, pray. Hey, God, what, uh, what am I doing here? Is this, do you approve of this? This is really all yours anyway. I'm just stewarding it. How, how does this look? How does this look? You know, I invite God to be a part of that. I think that's so important. I think that's what Rebecca would say, is that we have to make a decision. Why? Because feelings lie, but decisions stick with you forever. Decisions will stick with you forever. And that's important. So I think those are the principles Rebecca would give us for giving generously. But I think she has a few last words for us, kind of some words of encouragement. encouragement. The first one would be even the smallest acts of generosity make a difference. Even the smallest acts of generosity make a difference. She would say, hey, it was only water, and they were only camels. <laughs> if I knew I was going to get jewelry and be the great-grandmother of Jesus out of that, I probably could have gone four. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the smallest acts, we have no idea. And, you know, that's one of the things I love. I think this is a part of the DNA of our church. We just give generously, even the smallest acts. You know, if you consider yourself a part of the church, Vineyard Church family, I encourage you to make this a part of your everyday life. When you get home at the end of the day, take an account for your days. Who did I bless today? Who did I give generously to today? Who did I serve? And it doesn't always have to be financially. It could be just recognizing somebody. Hey, I see you. You're doing a great job. It could be giving somebody a hug. It could be writing somebody an encouraging note. I mean, it's just those small acts of It's making an investment is really what it is in somebody's life an eternal investment. You know, God bless the dream teamers, almost 300 dream teamers here at Vineyard who serve one and worship one. They know they're making an investment. If somebody gets saved today, they are making an investment in that. When somebody chooses Jesus, they know they're a part of that decision, whether it's warmly welcoming somebody at the front doors, holding a baby, playing an instrument, operating the camera. I mean, they're all a part of that. They know they're a part of that decision because they're making an investment. Even the smallest acts of generosity can get somebody saved. Even giving somebody a hot cup of coffee can get somebody saved. Yeah. Jesus says this in Matthew chapter 10. And if anyone gives even a cold cup of water to one of these little ones, because he is my disciple. Do we have any of Jesus' disciples in here? Amen. There we go. He is my disciple. I tell you the truth, he will certainly not lose his reward. That word reward, why don't you underline that? The Greek word for that is apodidomai. That means I will pay you back when you get to heaven. 
I'm going to pay you back. I will reward you is literally what it means. You know, the final thing I think Rebecca would say to us is that when you give, you give to the Lord. What a great one to end with. You give to the Lord. Matthew chapter 25 says, I tell you the truth, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. When you went to that outreach event and you served that person in need, you did it for me. When you went to the women's retreat and you prayed for a young woman who was really hurt, who was really broken, needed that, you did it for me. Dream team, or wherever you are holding that baby right now that is just restless, Jesus is watching. Jesus is saying, hey, that's for me. I see that. I see that. Whatever we do, do unto the Lord. Amen? Amen. I hope you're stirred to make every part of your life count. Even the smallest acts make eternal differences if we choose to make eternal investments. Let's make it a part of who we are here at Vineyard. And we're just known for that. We're a church that just gives generously in all areas of life. Would you bow your heads with me? Mm. Yeah, let's just be still. We're going to make some heart decisions here. I just invite the Holy Spirit to come. That's God's presence. Just overflow in this room. Yes, Jesus. More of your presence, Father. You know, last Saturday when I was sitting in that memorial service, I was just listening to story after story of how people's lives were impacted and really how hundreds of people came to know Jesus just because of simple acts of service, just because of simple acts of generosity. I I was sitting there thinking, I want to live like that. I want to make every moment count. That's how I want to live. Well, friend, we can live like that. It just requires some decisions. It's a decision. You have to make a decision today. God, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you would help every one of us, yeah, just to make that heart decision to live generously. Jesus, help us to be just a church that gives generously. Help us to give generously in all areas. Help us to live with an an eternal impact mentality. Give us that spirit of generosity. Give us a willing heart, Father. Yes, Jesus, I pray this in your name with every head bowed and every eye closed. Some of you here today are saying, Samuel, I need to get my relationship right with God. Even throughout this message as you were talking, that was, there was something tugging at me, but knocking on my heart. Well, friend, let me tell you, God loves you. You need to hear that. God loves you. He loves you so much he gave. In his generosity, he gave his one and only son for you so that you didn't have to do that thing you should have had to do for your sin. No, Jesus came and he died for you so that you may have eternal life. Why? Because he loves you. And all you have to do to receive that is give him your life. Is surrender the controls of your life over to God. You know, maybe some of you have made that decision before, made that commitment, and you've kind of stepped away from it. You've kind of backslid. You're back in control. Well, friend, you can rededicate your life to God today. Get your relationship with, right with God today. You know, and some of you specifically, the Lord's placed you on my heart this week. I, I don't know who it is. But some of you have been going to church a long time. Long time. You've, you've been coming to Vineyard for quite some time. And you've even taken steps in the right direction. But you've never made this decision. That area is gray for you. Yeah, I'm just, I'm where I'm at now. Well, don't let that be a blurry area anymore. Let that decision be made clear today. Today I put my faith in Jesus Christ. Today I make a decision to follow God. Just make it very clear. Well, I want to pray with you right where you are if you want to make that decision. And I'm not going to make you stand up. 
or come down front. And I want to pray with you right there in your seat. It's just a simple little prayer. The Bible says if we confess with our mouths and believe in our heart, then we will be saved. So with every head bowed and every head closed, I want to say, who today would say that, Jesus, I give you my life. God, today I rededicate my life to, to you. If you want to pray that prayer with me, would you raise your hand right where you are? Just raise it up high so I can see it. I see that. Praise Jesus. I see that. Praise God. I see that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody else? A decision today? Yes, Father. Hmm. Praise Jesus. I see that. Praise God. Pray. I saw that. Praise God. And you can put your hands down. I want to pray to you where you are right now, and I'll help you with the words. You just got to, you believe in your heart. You can repeat it after me softly or you know, just follow me. Would you say, thank you, God, for sending your son to pay my penalty. Today I receive it by giving you my life. Make me the kind of person you want me to be. Come live inside of me. Make me brand new. Forgive me for going my own way. Today I turn my heart to you. Change me. With all of my heart, I'm going to serve you with my everything. And say this little phrase. Anybody in the room can join me in this. I give you my life. I give you my life. I believe you were buried, you died, and you rose again. And today I choose to put my faith in you. I give you my trust. Today I give you my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for tuning in to today's message. If God is impacting your life through this ministry, join us in reaching others by investing today. You can give by texting your donation amount to 757-230-2110 or by going to vineyardchurch.com slash give. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you never miss an update. We'll see you next week.